Matt texted us. He's like, what's your walkout song? We were like, Connor, what's our walkout song? He's like, welcome to the jungle. We're like, and then it came on. We're like, what an odd walkout song for tonight. <laughs> Just wait till you hear the walk-off song because it's not what you picked. Oh, you changed the walk-off song? Oh, I was like, dang. Pat, Pat recommended one, but then I think we went with what you said. That's good. Oh, anyways, welcome back oh, to another episode yeah. of Mean Girl Pod. <laughs> <laughs> Season two. Season two. Season two. I'm going to keep saying that. This is, a, this is a nice crowd tonight. Yeah, some we, familiar faces. We said everyone needs a drink for this episode. Except for us. Besides us. I have not had a single drop of alcohol all week. Me either. This is not the... I know, I'm proud of myself. Was somebody clapping? <laughs> Thank you. I, I, also, I also clap. I know, I, this morning when I was talking to, to Mim, I was like, Mim, I feel like I've had five bottles of wine every night when I wake up. Because I'm just like so exhausted. Oh. Like, I feel like I ran a marathon. I feel like I drank a ton, but really, I just sit on here and talk. Well, and you don't <laughs> actually get hungover if you did have five bottles of wine, so. I know. Maybe so. you should drink. I should drink? Well, well I'm going to drink mean, like, tonight. Okay. Are you drinking tonight? I don't know, wherever the wind blows me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Such a lovely turnout. It is a great turnout. Last night was great, too. We had a fun time talking about our next venture, mm -hmm. Just Media, mm -hmm. Mean Girl Pod Season 2. Mm -hmm. We're so excited for the rest of this year, 2024. Yes. And these four live shows have been an absolute blast, and we're so thankful for everyone who's came. Yes. I mean, we couldn't do it without anyone. You got the was, team on your back right here. You just keep thanking yeah. them. You got it. I'm just waiting to see when you're ready to talk about tonight's episode topic. Oh, whenever you toss me the ball, I'll catch it. Okay, so what are, what are we going to discuss tonight? Well, tonight is the um, Alex's relationship update topic. Yes. Which I always knew was coming, right? Like, obviously, there was probably going to be a day that I did this. Um, and it's turned out to be a little bit harder than I anticipated as the best things in life, I guess, usually are. Um, not that this is the, what the, what? It's not the best thing in life. This is not, I'm not having fun, but like, <laughs> it's hard, okay. What I thought about last night though was, so I had written a rough draft of what I wanted to relay and I sent it to Jordan and then this morning I said, scrap that. We're gonna go from the heart. And so, you know, here we go. Um, I did write a couple notes. I'm like, I'm the bridesmaid that is like, I don't get up there and read the speech off my phone. I memorize it. But tonight I was like, let's not forget. Just there's a couple things I don't want to forget. So I'm not up here texting. I, I am looking at something. But what I thought about last night was when Graham Bennett, I'm going to paint a picture before, but I want to say this. Um, when he left New York five months ago, which feels, I, I don't know, I don't know how long ago it feels, but he, <laughs> how's that the joke? <laughs> no, so, oh, we've done three episodes and we've made some really good jokes, no one laughs, and I say five months ago, be like, oh my God. And, and he's a comedian too. <laughs> he's a comedian? Yeah, he's a comedian. Holy shit, I feel good. Okay, this is gonna be good. <laughs> All right, so now that I'm funny, Thanks, I'm Pat. feeling better. Pat brought him. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. No, he probably paid him five I was laugh. paid him extra for that. <laughs> La laugh, please. Um, so when Graham left five months ago, um, he looked at me before he shut the door and he said, I need you to make me a promise. And I said, okay. And he said, whenever you do the episode on our marriage ending, I want you to make me a promise that you will give it everything you've got. And I said, okay, I promise you that I will. And at the time, I thought, I don't even know if I'll do that episode. We'll see. But sure, I'll give it all I got at that time. So I called him last night. And we talked for an hour and a half. And I, he answered the phone. And, well, I, I have to call him twice. It's the new policy. He won't answer on one. But if I call twice, he knows I mean it. So he answers. And he's like, hello. And I'm like, well, tomorrow. And he's like, I know. Knock him dead. And I said, I just, I wanted to call you and tell you I'm going to make good on that promise. And I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it everything I've got. And he said, well, you might 
you know, could you hurry? Because the state of Oklahoma is really starting to create its own narrative around this whole deal, and it's getting a little out of hand. And you're the one with the podcast, and I, you know, I'm kind of antisocial. I don't really like to go outside. So if you could get out there and kind of go do that episode, that'd be good. And I was like, people are starting to talk about it. And he was like, yeah, I think people are bored. But he goes, <laughs> he's like, well, maybe a trailer will, you know, turn over on the highway next week, and we'll have some new headline. Thanks, and I was Graham. like, That's we'll never great. lose your humor, Graham. Nope. It's all you got sometimes. <laughs> Um, and so here I sit. So what I'm going to do tonight is attempt to explain how we got here. Um, and I'm going to give it all I've got for him because he deserves that. So I think I had a transition. I'm so bad at transitions. All right, I called him. Mm. Oh, you know, I, I, I did want to say this because I thought about whether or not I wanted to do this episode. Like, I, that, I've kind of been there the past month. I'm like, do I even want to do it? Do I even have to share it? And then I realized with our listeners, Graham's a character on Mean Girl Pod. I mean, we're real people and he's a real person, but we referenced him so much. He's number three. He was number three. And he was such a big part of this podcast and... And I shared with you guys all the beautiful parts of him, all the hard parts of our marriage. And I, and sometimes, you know, I didn't even want to share those. And the person that wanted me to share them was Graham. And I think a lot of people always thought, oh, he probably hates that she shares a lot. And we always joke, no one loves Mean Girl Pod more than Graham. And he always says, you know, you, you get out there and you tell the truth. And his boundary was always, don't be mean, ironically, about anybody, and don't lie. And if you're not lying, whatever you say, I'm good with. And this episode will be no exception to that. So what I'm going to tell you from here is the honest truth. Um, he told me he trusts me, of course, with this narrative, because it is the truth. And we will honor his rules, and we will not be mean, of course, and we will just tell what happened. So if you're like, just came here because you heard there was an open bar, let me just explain how I met Graham. We met, and I just realized I'm 30, and, and I met, I knew him a, a bit, because we're from Oklahoma City, both of us, but when I was 20, I went to a wedding, and we sat beside each other. And I probably talked to the man every day since then, right? So he went to the, he went to the University of San Diego, I went to the University of Oklahoma, we were both from Oklahoma City, though. Our parents knew each other. Um, families knew each other. Small town vibes there. Um, and so we were long distance for four years. And then Graham did the best thing for me ever, which I want to thank him for, is he said, you know what would be really good for you, Alex, is if you moved out of Oklahoma, because you've never moved. And I know my mom's like, oh, really? Quick pause to talk about Miracle Sheets, which Jordan is holding. And because mine just arrived, I don't have my bed yet, but hers are on her bed. So winter is here, and that means struggling to find the right temperature when we sleep. So funny, she was just talking about this. We recently found a way to get the perfect temperature all night long. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so I am a very, very hot sleeper. It doesn't matter what season it is. I sweat when I sleep. I tried Miracle Sheets. It's been about two weeks now. I have not sweat once in my sleep and I wake up feeling cool all the time. And they're so soft and cozy, I love them. Okay, let me tell you why. Self-cooling properties for better quality sleep. Inspired by NASA, that's incredible. There's, <laughs> they really are, like the, the, the things. They're self-cleaning, they're infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7 of bacterial growth. That's incredible. Comfort and quality, obviously. The perfect holiday gift. This would be the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. And they're designed for your skin. So stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, but with these self-cleaning sheets, you're sleeping on so much less dirt and you're at the right temperature. So give Miracle a try. Go to trymiracle.com slash mean girl. That's trymiracle.com slash mean girl to try it today or gift it to somebody special this holiday season. We've got a special deal for you guys. Oh my God, save over 40% and use promo code MEANGIRL at checkout and you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. That's incredible. 
trymiracle.com. That's that's actually the way it is. It's trymiracle.com. It's all one like try is part of the website. dot com slash mean girl and use code mean girl to claim your free three piece towel set and save over forty percent off. Trymiracle.com slash mean girl. Uh <laughs> And I never came back. No. So I I said, okay, I'll try it. So I moved out to the West Coast with him to Newport Beach, California. Loved it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. We lived out there. He proposed. And then we got married when I was 25. So 2019, April 6, 2019, we get married. And I want to pause there for a second and say something. When I walked down that aisle... Well, first, I looked really good when I walked down that aisle. I wasn't there. You weren't. No. She was not a bridesmaid. <laughs> was not. Not a bride. Did not know her yet. Nope. Um, but I, what I wanted to say about it was, people always ask now, do you regret that? No. When Graham and I got married, and we've talked about this, we were at the right place at the right time. I wouldn't trade it for the world. It will always be one of the most special things um, that's ever happened to me and him. And we are so thankful for the four beautiful years that we were married. From there, shit hit the fan, I'm just kidding. From there, it was great. <laughs> um, we moved, we lived in Newport for two years, moved to LA um, in the middle of COVID, lived there for six years, very bad idea. Didn't see the apartment, moved downtown during COVID across from the Staples Center crypto uh, that we hated that. And so then I got the job at Barstool and we moved to New York. And New York was great at the beginning. We loved it. And then about a year, year and a half ago, Graham was like, I, I think, so we always had a very clear picture of what our future looked like. And we both saw the same thing and we saw it very clearly and, What happened was it kind of split a bit, and I think it came out of focus for both of us all at the same time. So it was like, we were kind of like, well, I don't know that we're on the same page anymore, and are we even looking at the same thing anymore, was kind of the question. So Graham starts to say, you know, I I think I want to go back to Oklahoma. And I said, okay, I'm in, of course, I'll go back. Remember, I said, I'm moving to Oklahoma. And at the time, great, just, and in a bit, in a, about 90% of me always thought I would end up back in Oklahoma. So I just, I kind of went on autopilot and I said, okay, I'm going to Oklahoma. Told Jordan's going to Oklahoma. Told Graham, told my friends, told my family. And I start to mentally adjust to going to Oklahoma. Um, And then, and then I think my heart took over a bit and his heart took over a bit. And we spent, I wrote this part out because I just, I don't want to butcher it. You think I could just say it. Okay, from January to April, he wanted to go back to Oklahoma. I was down and mentally prepared. Good for me for writing this. But after we made that decision, yeah, our future that once looked so clear looked a little different. So we spent January to April not... We spent January to April doing things for each other, I think, that neither of us really wanted to do. Like, I think I was like, I'll go to Oklahoma, and he was like, I'm living in New York, and it, I don't really know how to explain it. We, we never argued. We weren't fighting. We weren't mad. We weren't yelling. We were just... Well, we, well from, from January to April, we were a little bit mad at some points. And, and I think what happened was in May, we started having some really hard conversations. And in May and June, what came out of that was our hearts were going to be in different places. And I think we very, we very much knew what we were looking at. And... And for us, you know, he was, he was like, he's going to do the Oklahoma, and I was going to stay here. And, and we had a very vivid moment where I remember he looked at me and he said, I, I love you so much that I'm going to let you go. 
and I know you love me so much that you're gonna let me go. And I said, I think we're, I think we're looking at that. Um, and that was, that was shocking, but when it's in your heart, it's a little less shocking and there's a sense of relief to it almost of like, we are gonna do this. And, and people will say, you know, you know, I'll tell you this, it would be, we, did, we didn't have the, oh, you know, finances broke us or he, he drank too much or you know walked in on him in the maid didn't have didn't have that moment and i i wish almost we did because it's like blackjack well what's the book says says to hit that would be like well that's that leads to you probably get divorced this is a little uh, i had a god awful time trying to explain it to my family and friends because you're just trying to explain your heart and they're like ah, 2 plus 2 is not equaling 4 for me on that one and you're like i know and Graham and I had a lot of conversations where we cry and we laugh at the same time. And we say, God, like we would. Like this would happen to us. We would just be like, that was really beautiful. And, and we're gonna go indifferent. We're gonna, we're gonna let each other go. Because one of my best friends said, you know, Alex, I was gonna ask you if if you, if you really gave it everything you could to get through it. And she said, but I've seen you and Graham get through some real shit. And you, you, you guys could get through it. But on the other side of us getting through it, we knew, lied. We both want kids. And we knew that ended in resentment on both ends. And, and, and that's... That is really, that sounded a bit simple. There's a lot of emotion that was wrapped up. I, I don't remember, 2023 is gonna be an interesting one for me because I don't remember a lot of the first part of it. I think it was heavy on the head and I, there was times where I think a lot of my close friends from back at home are in my family, like some of my cousins, they're just gonna be blindsided a bit by this. Um, and, and so was I, you know, like sometimes I'm like, me too. But when you're in it, you, you're so in it, and then you find it very hard to talk about. And, and, it, and it was sad, and it was uncomfortable, and it was, there was some anger, and there was a lot of confusion and I think the, the biggest thing there was, was two people that were very scared. Because, you know, divorce is a scary word. I couldn't say it. I remember, I remember back in May, I couldn't say the word. And I'd say it and I would just start, I just, I, I couldn't say it. And, and, and it's worth putting a little asterisk on I'm from the Midwest, and that it's, it's a little less unconventional there. And so it's scary. We, we said, you know, Graham said, God, I, I'm, I'm going to be the one in Oklahoma. I'm going to be the one in Whole Foods. I'm going to run into that, you know, Karen's sister who's going to be like, oh, did you hear Alex and Graham didn't make it? I said, right, welcome to the world. There's going to be a lot of that. But you and I know exactly what happened, and we know that the ending is happier if we do it right now. And we know that we end up hating each other, really hating each other if we keep going. And I think, I think we're lucky that we can see it now. And I'll tell you what, God, it was hard because there was a lot of times where I felt a lot of pressure to give up on doing it, going, going through with what my heart was telling me. There was a lot of times where I said, ah, this physically hurts, where I would rather, and he, he said the same thing. I, I said, man, wouldn't it just be easier? 
when you're around your family and they're all just kind of looking at you, to just call me and say, don't you just kind of want to not, you just want to unseparate? And that's a short-term fix, um, but it would be a lot more comfortable. And somebody said to him about a month ago, like, oh, well, you guys kind of took the easy way out. And he said, oh, I tell you what, if this was the easy way, I don't want to see the hard one. And I said, I know, but... And it... It was... It was so... I want, I want to say, I think it's worth saying, that the person I was married to was unbelievable. Um, I, when I talked to him last night, I said, uh, I will always believe in you, I think, debatably more than anybody on this planet. And he said, well, I hope every little girl that's ever born gets a slice of your soul. And I said, and I, you know, I'm glad we have that narrative for each other and that love for each other, but I'm glad we're strong enough to follow our hearts. And I'm most thankful that our hearts ended up matching in the sense that the path forward would be separate. Um, and, and that is, did that make sense? Is that? You said it better than I, expected like I was I, the bar low n no it was not <laughs> low but like I you're you always are so well spoken every single time we go on an episode but I think what you just said was probably I, I'm like I am speechless right now by how well you just said that I've been with you for a lot of this I've heard I mean I've seen the stories everything firsthand that you've told me everything I've probably knew about it. I was one of the first people who probably knew about it. And I mean, you just said that so well. And I, I love Graham. He is one of the most amazing people ever. I was telling you upstairs that um, the last time I talked to him was when we were going through a hard time, when we were um, thinking about leaving Barstool and he sent me one of the kindest texts. Even though you guys weren't together anymore, he didn't owe me anything. He didn't owe the podcast anything. But he took the time to literally write me a novel of how much he loves both of us, the podcast, how great we are. And he's just, he's always been our number one supporter. Yes, absolutely. And I'll always support him too. Oh, without a we, doubt. We love Graham. Yeah, and, as, and I, think as, I think that's why... I was okay with doing this episode. I, 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 really, I, didn't, I didn't know if I could, but I feel like we owe to wrap that in a bow and say, like, he was such a big part of it. Yeah, and I'm proud of you for how you said that and how you told it because it was authentic and true and I can't imagine sitting in your spot and doing that. So you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. And I, oh, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> We love you. Yeah, I love you. And I think it's important too that, because um, a lot of people ask so many of the same questions. And I think it's so important that people know that this wasn't a rash decision. It wasn't made overnight. Um, this has been a year plus almost happening. I mean, I, I think we talked about it that maybe around this time last year, a little bit sooner, is when we saw the struggle start. and. You guys did everything, couples therapy, went back home to Oklahoma, talked about on the podcast very openly, if you go back, I don't know, like 50 episodes now, like you guys worked your butts off to try to fix it. And I think that's what's so jarring about it when you tell, when, I, I think it's why I didn't tell a lot of people because it's, it's, you would see us and you'd be like, great. They're not over there. Alex and Graham, every, you know, we weren't, we're not the couple when you go out every night, they're just yelling at each other. And look, it, we're, we didn't have that. And so I think, I, I didn't know how to explain it. And sometimes you can't explain your heart. And so I probably erred on saying too little and didn't bring people along on the journey with me. But when you're in it, I think shutting down is sometimes 
I don't know, maybe it was a protection thing, but, and, and, and when you say it to people, you know, they're like, well, you can get through anything. It's like, well, yeah, probably could, you know? Yeah, for sure, could. But it's just, it's just different. Um. <laughs> My friends are calling me, sorry. That was just <laughs> impeccable timing. Um. I thought she was on the Zoom, okay. <laughs> um, she, she heard a guardian angel was like, you so. should call Alex during the podcast. <laughs> um. So like I said, there's a lot of questions that a lot of people have asked. Are you okay answering a few of those questions? Yes, yes. So one of the biggest questions that, I mean, you already know I'm going to ask you, what the internet has asked a million times over, they need and want to know if there was a prenup. Oh, that's a mem one. Um, yeah. Okay, did I say any answer? I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, there was not. Okay. Not one that was signed. And how did your, your parents feel about that, and how do you feel about that? Well, like how did they react to it? Like the, the whole money situation. Okay. Uh, well. You can plead the fifth if you'd like. No, I need to <laughs> apologize for something, actually, so I'll do it here. Uh, I told him I was going to do this. I forgot. <laughs> Don't you love signing up for it? Uh, <laughs> I'm good with saying this. I want to say it perfectly. And I, I, I would not have brought this up. However, I made a TikTok about it, and I left it up for five hours, and now I have to sleep in that bed. So, you know, when we record in the studio, we can cut things out. But when you say it, when you say it in front of people, y'all can't, y'all won't unhear it. So, you got to <laughs> nail it. I can't say, cut that, Kate. It's just like... You know, you somebody guys, can't come around and be like, I have podcast anxiety. I, I shouldn't have said the money part. Cut that one out. I was like, well, they all heard it. Okay, so it's very matter of fact. So let's just, okay. Uh, is the comedian laughing again? Okay, it was a sneeze. I was like, <laughs> this one's not funny. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so when we were married, I, I'm on record saying this. Pro, I'm, I am very for the shared bank account method, which is true. So when it came time to split, no part of me ever thinks that I am entitled to any of Graham's personal money. We had an account where we both put money into. Um, I worked all four years that we were married. When we split, he had access to that account and I had opened my own accounts. Um, we had come to an agreement where I had requested back one third of the salary that I made while we were married that I put into the account. And it's a number. Um, he, he promised me I would have that by a date. On that date, his lawyer called my lawyer, not coming. I was the breadwinner while we were married, the law states, and the law is fair, and this outcome is fair. And I would owe him, technically, and, and we will call it a wash. And, and the only thing that these two will do when they get divorced, we lived in cities where we just rented apartments, no assets, sold the cars. When we get divorced, we will sign, you know, it, it will be a paperwork uh, situation and it just requires signatures and there'll be no asset split. That is, that was hard to hear because we had, he had promised something different. He is sorry for that promise. I made a lot of life decisions based on that promise. I had signed a lease. I had started the company where I was going to pay people and it, it hit me like a gut punch, but the law is fair and that outcome is fine and welcome to the world. And I, I, I made a TikTok about it um, and I promised myself that I would never let my lower brain take over throughout this whole situation. Um, I left it up for five hours, didn't sleep, felt like shit about it. 
and I learned a very hard lesson, but, but like we talked about, probably a cheap lesson in the scheme of things, because I learned right then, that man, does, he doesn't want to hurt me, that was not vindictive, and when I called him last night to apologize for that video, uh, I reminded him that hurt people hurt people, and I was devastated, and I did the wrong thing and made a video about that, which does nothing for anybody, uh, especially not him or I, and that hurt him, and so that was, that was very bad. Now, the question is, how do my parents feel about the money situation? So I said to my dad the other day, I was going through my stuff, and I was like, ah, oh, like sometimes it's just so hard not to be kind of so mad about that. And he looked at me and he said, no, it's not. It's not hard to be mad about that. You love that boy, and you always will. And, you, and that's the only option, and you just get right over it. And when I talked to Graham last night, we both just, you know, sorry for the situation, sorry for the video, blah, 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 you know, back and forth. And we're both just like, no, like, we had these four years, like, you can't put a price on that. Like, why are we talking about money right now? And that is the largest point. And I was very happy that that was the same advice my dad gave me of just, like, moving right along. And, and then he said, you know, well, well light a fire under that ass and I said it will. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Lumi. Lumi deodorant was created by an OBGYN who discovered that odor isn't just an underarm thing. It's an all over thing. So she developed Lumi, a pH optimized deodorant that's clinically proven to control odor everywhere for up to 72 hours. I know that we've talked about odor a lot in the past on Mean Girl Pod and so many people DM us all the time. They're like, what's that deodorant that you talked about a few episodes ago? And you guys, the, the deodorant, I can't even speak because I'm so excited. The deodorant that we talked about is Lumi. I used to use the exact same deodorant all throughout high school and college. And one day my mom literally was like, Jordan, you smell like BO. And I was like, no, 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 I never smell like BO. I don't know what you're talking about. And I smelled myself and I actually did. And she was telling me that sometimes we just become immune to our deodorants and to change it up. And I was in Florida visiting them at the time. So I was like, well, I don't have any other deodorant with me. But she showed, she allowed me to use her deodorant, which is Lumi and her and my dad both use it. And I tried it out and I became obsessed and hooked. I can't stop using it. It smells so good. I love all the scents so much. You can really put anywhere. You can put on your underarms. You can put it on other parts of your body. If they smell, it just, it works great and has a long lasting smell. And I just feel fresh every time I use it. And like I said, it's my mom and my dad use it. So males, females, anyone can use it. And they have so many different scents. So I absolutely am obsessed with Lumi deodorant. Another thing that's great about Lumi is they have a Lumi starter pack, which is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, which is my personal favorite, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and for free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code MEANGIRL at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% of your starter pack when, when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code MEANGIRL. That was lumideodorant.com and use code MEANGIRL for 40% off your starter pack. So it's, you know, that's where we sit, but I, I do need to answer for the very poor form TikTok that a lot of people screen recorded. <laughs> and I never saw it. Well, it was 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., so I don't know what they were doing awake. Well, you know that I'm asleep during those hours. <laughs> I, it's still to this day, I'm like, how did I not see it? I go on social media way more than you every day. Oh, let me tell you, if we saw the epicenter, it's Oklahoma City. I mean, they're staring <laughs> yeah. at it. They're sending it back and forth. I'm like, can I get a cut of it? People are like, do you see that TikTok? I was like, which one? Which TikTok? <laughs> I had no idea. Court. Still, I don't think I've seen the full thing. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, okay. <laughs> well, I think that was very brave of you to apologize and to address. It was not good of me. It was bad. Um, once again, I'm proud of you. Thank you. How do you think your friends at home feel? And I'm not sure if this question was written in regards to that or just in general about the situation. Probably. Uh, no, that's, that's for me. That's in general. Um, my friends at home, I... I I, I think this comes up, you know, people are like, oh, what side are they on? Well, there aren't sides. And, and, if, 
and he, he says this to him, his friends, and I say it to my friends, if you love me, you love him. And when you see him, you just go right on over like you would do, and you just, hey, Graham, how are you? Um, because I think it's so awkward when couples, you know, friends and all that, I'm not the one that lives there, but I know that my friends at home, I think they felt very confused by this whole thing because I really clammed up and I, I talked to them, I tried to talk to them, but it's so hard to talk about, but uh, I think they feel like they just love him and, and I think they're, they're sad. I know my best friend Sydney, for example, like she just sees him and just tears up because she doesn't want people to hurt, mm -hmm. but I also think there's a very large part of them that's proud of us for doing what we felt was right. I love that. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. There doesn't need to be sides with this divorce. It's already sad enough. You don't need to, if you're on Graham's side, you don't need to see you and be mean to you or vice versa. Yeah, just love. I love that. Love. This, this next question is making me laugh because it literally is, was it hard for you to talk about? Yes, sure no, was. No, it was easy. No, I had a great time, ma'am. It was fine. I'm like thinking, like, I really should have read these more thoroughly. But we were working. And it was multi It wasn't hard for you to talk about. Uh, Y-E-S, period. No, it was the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. So simple. I like this one, though. Okay. Would you trade this outcome? Mm. I wouldn't trade anything about anything in my life from this moment backwards. Not one, I wouldn't trade one part of it. Yeah, you and I always say everything happens for a reason. And I feel that, I feel that compounding effect more and more. I mm -hmm. feel signs, like I got a lot of, I had a lot of signs on my way here. Not, not on my way here today, but in 2020, I have a lot of like, keep going, you're correct, like affirmation signs kind of. And so no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade anything. Well, and, and Graham was such a monumental part of your life and even mean girl like I don't think the podcast would be where it is today without him no not at all he in the beginning he was our sounding block like he would have to listen to the episode before we even listen to the episode totally like the, the beginning days we'd be like Graham listen give us your notes if you think it's good and it passes the Graham check we'll put it out yeah then, then we're okay yep. yeah yeah like no. he, he kept us in track like so 100% yeah. and he kept he was our guardrails and I think Listen, what, what we decided to do was, it was gut-wrenching, but it was right. And I sit here today and I'm, I can say that without a shot. I said to my mom today at lunch, I said, this is hard. This is going to be hard tonight, but that doesn't change that it is correct. Would you like to respond to that? You look like you want to say something. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, just, <laughs> she's just listening. She just, she's excited. Your mom's um, reactions have really helped every episode no kidding. so much. She's like my comfort in this year. I know. Um, is there something you, you, would do, you would do different through this process? Well, I wouldn't have made the TikTok, but other than that, I don't think... Mm, no, I don't think I could have. I, I was doing the best I could every day with what I had. And so, no, I wouldn't change anything. I feel like that's a very like, pleasant way to feel. Yeah. Going through this. And, and even, even that one time where I really was like, oh, man, we, had, we were doing good. We weren't being petty. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, but now you know how that felt. So I, I took a lot from that. Yeah. But no, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change anything. I love that. Um, oh, I, this is a good one. And I feel like we've talked about this so much, just you and I together. Was there a time you ever doubted it? Yeah, well, you know, at the beginning when I started thinking it, I was mad at myself for thinking, because they say, once you say you're, the, the relationship advice goes, and it, and it seems to be pretty common, once you think separation, it's hard to unthink it. Mm -hmm. So the way you're supposed to think is constantly together, constantly together, constantly. And it got to a point where I, I couldn't think that anymore. And so and I, I was almost like reprimanding myself. Like I was like, no, bad. And he was doing the same thing. We were in total denial. And the first time we started talking about separation, I was very scared, and I did doubt it at that moment, but everything in me, when I really closed my eyes and got true to my soul, like, I was like, no, you, what we're looking at is correct. Like, you're seeing it for what it is. Um, so I, I did, I was nervous, because you don't want to make a mistake. And I, I was worried about that, but I never doubted it, no. 
I, but I, you know me, I mean, I was journaling, I was meditating, I was giving this every single thing I had to really dig deep and be like, how do we feel? Um, so doubt it, no, but make damn sure I didn't make a mistake. Yeah. So in this episode, you said that you talked to Graham last night on the phone, but when was the last time that you guys actually saw each other in person? Because you said that he's been living in Oklahoma for five months now? Right? Yeah. So, uh, well, I saw him. <laughs> I can't, I almost can't, I almost can't help but laugh. It's not funny. Um, <laughs> I was like, did I miss something? No, no, he, <laughs> our coffee table. <laughs> it's not, it's, was it, it was, Graham, all due respect on the coffee table. It's beautiful. It's a family, it's been the family for a very long time. He came, it is, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. He came to get the coffee table. Um, when? Except uh, like a month ago. So I, I've seen him. I pro, I seen him. Um, that was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Came. Yeah. yeah. Three, two, three weeks ago. Came to get his coffee I like know table. This answer. I'm like, no, I remember the exact day actually <laughs> was. <laughs> and then other. So in the past six months, I've seen him twice. One okay. dinner, one dinner together. And then uh, she came to get the stuff. Okay. Um, what do you want people to say about all of this? Like when they. When they leave this room, when they listen to the episode, like what is something you want people to take away from it? Oh, well, I want, I, you know, I don't have any inspiration because my mom said, she was like, you know, be careful not to give advice. And I was like, oh, that'll be the easiest thing ever because <laughs> got none to give. Um, so I would say my new thing is if you can't inspire, be inspired. You know, put yourself in a position to be impacted. Maybe they could take that because I don't, that's just a quote that I randomly like that has nothing to do with this, but I think you need something. If they had to take something away, they could take that. Yeah. Also, not to take sides. <laughs> that's a good one. And I think if it's portraying to just you and Graham, like you guys are leaving in a very, like with love in your hearts. You yes. don't hate each other. No, in this narrative thing that's starting to happen, it's like, well, don't assume, how about that? Mm -hmm. And I, you know what I think's interesting? How people approach you. Like I went home for her 60th birthday and I saw some of your friends and they're like, how are you? And I'm like, you wanna say it or you want me, you want me to go? For, you're not gonna say it. And they're like, no, but real. And I'm like, I mean, you're thinking it, right? Like this is awkward and I feel awkward, but like, so, what I loved when what somebody said to me was, hey, I think you're going through a hard time. Just want you to know I love you. And I was like, thank you. And, and it, that, that was like very, maybe that's not for everyone, but so if you run into me, do that. But <laughs> if I think it's nice when people just say, I'm thinking, you don't have to tell me, mm -hmm. but I love you. And I, or I'm thinking of you or, hey, you hang in there. That, that was kind of nice. And we don't have, then we don't have to come explain or anything but just a little, it's all good. I like that. That, that was better. Was that the question? Um, Kai, yeah, yeah yep, yep, it, it was is, the question. It is now. This is your episode, so it was the question. Thank you. <laughs> and last but not least, what do you want for Graham? Oh, um, I want Graham to be You know, I, I said last night I wish I could take his hurt and hold it for him. And I think you would want to take my hurt and hold it. I think we all want to take each other's hurt. And we can't do that. So what I want for him is to be so happy and 100% Graham Bennett. I want him to be himself. I want him to be loved. And I want him to be truly so freaking happy and full of life. And I think he wants that for me too. Oh, I, I know for a fact he wants that for you. Yeah. I love that. Alex, I'm so proud of you and I love you. <laughs> like, you should be really proud of yourself. Thank you. Like, I, I mean, I had so much faith in you, but this turned out better than I ever could have imagined. Did I miss any, like, is there any glaring? I don't want any comments like, you know, just glaze right over that. People always tell me that. I don't think so, but I also... But I, we don't know, you know, because yeah. we're so in it. Okay. I mean, like, I was... 
there. Did it make sense? Okay. Um, I was going to say, do not ask for live questions. No, God, no. <laughs> I'm cutting you off. We'll take some questions from the audience. No. Um, no, I think, you, I think you said it so well. I think you hit all the major bullet points. Like you said, Mim gave us some. Um, and everything else that you didn't answer is you don't need to tell the public everything. No, and I, think, and I do think in these scenarios, I did find this um, to be true. You don't have to tell anyone anything. And you're allowed, to, and I've never been very good at that. I've always felt like I owed people, you know, like I had a little list of people I should tell. And none of that exists, you know? And, and you're allowed to protect your peace. And people can just, instead of feel slighted for not knowing, just, you know, extend. I, I, man, they say grief gives you perspective, and I never understood that but I, I've gained a lot of perspective through this, and I think, I think what I see now is like you can protect yourself and have some peace, and you don't, owe, you don't have to walk people on your journey because sometimes that's just too hard and you don't know how to explain it. And so if next time you know, I see somebody going through something, I think I'll have a little bit more, I, don't ever know, I never know if empathy is the word, or the one that is like, I feel for you, I think I'll have more of that towards them. Yeah. Just knowing like it might be really hard for them instead of being mad that they didn't tell it, you know, or explain it or something, just saying it might be really hard for them to say that. Yeah. And now that we're talking about so many things that we kind of have held back on with these four live show episodes, I think that's the beauty of season two of Mean Girl Pod is there's so many new chapters happening for us and so many new stories we're going to be able to tell. And there's going to be so many people listening to this who have gone through what you're going through or are currently going through it or maybe are too scared to go through it. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that they have you to listen to is going to help them tremendously. And That's really sweet. Yeah, it's going to be like season two. You're going to be going through a whole new chapter of your life. I'll tell you on the scared part, there were so many times where I was so scared and I couldn't see like the next step, but I would just like put my foot down and... Um, I, ha I had a talk with him one day, and I said, I don't know how I get through the days. This was, wait, this was back in May, I think. I said, I don't know how I get through the days. And he said, well, how do you? And I say, well, I just surprised myself the next day that I got through it. And he said, well, I have a little bit of advice for you, and it was good, and I started doing it. He said, start imagining where you want to end up. Like, start thinking about what your happiest time is, what this looks like on the other side. And then when you get there, because you're going to get there, you'll be like, I've been here before. And that was helpful. Like, I would put myself to bed thinking about, okay, because, you know, my, my task now is who is Alex without Graham? And that's my focus right now is, is just loving me because, you know, it's been 10 years. And so I just started imagining, what does that look like? What do I want? And that's been a very happy place. So if somebody doesn't know their next step, just think about where you want to end up, and then you'll start taking the steps. I love that. Thanks, girl. So before we switch and end the episode on a little bit of a more, I don't want to say happy, but like silly note. Because mm -hmm. this is happy. Yeah, this Th is There's happy. a happy underlining tone here. Yeah, this is very happy. Do you, is there anything you want to... You want to add, or you do you feel like I just don't want the episode to end, and then you waking up tomorrow and being like, "Oh, I wish I would have said that." Um, I think I want to say, I I want to say I have been shocked. I have I have found myself oftentimes. I think if you told 18 year old Alex, and and I were already in high school, hey, you're gonna be divorced one day, I'd be like, no, sure am not. So I think I did something that I never thought I would do, and that's not necessarily winning a medal, right? That's not that version of it. But I would say I sit here today and in a very odd fashion say I'm stronger than I thought I was. I, well, I'm definitely stronger than I thought I was. And I, I know he would say the same thing. And so life doesn't look like what I thought it looked like, because I was pretty sure it looked like college, get married, have kids, have a career. I was pretty positive. Okay, well, I've just, you know, flipped that and reversed it. And, and I don't, and I don't want, if, if, if you're going through it right now and you're afraid of that, I would say don't be afraid of it because there's something very alive about 
saying every time I make a plan, I mean, it, I just, it's never the plan. So yeah. there's something very alive about saying, all right, follow the heart. Do it scared. Do it scared. I love that. That's the third time she's loved it. I do. I just love you. I'm starting to think she might be lying to me. I'm like, let's, let's move. I'm just kidding. No. That's sad. All right. Okay. Well, we no, can do I, these. I do love it. This, it's just, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Like, I just have no words. I feel like, I feel like your mom right now. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> Kim's like, like uh-huh. I'm just, or I, I feel like your big sister. <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. I'm your big sister this time. I like that. And I just, I've, I, I've seen you literally from the beginning with this whole process. I've seen you, I've seen Graham, I've seen it all firsthand. And you guys both handled it in such mature ways and with so much grace. And I mean, you guys have gone, you've come so far. And I know both of you are going to be so happy on the other side of this. Yes, you are correct. So I'm proud of you. Yes, I'm proud of you, you both. Thank you. And I love you both. I, I love Graham. You. If you're listening, thank I love you, you Graham. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, should we answer some uh, listener <clears throat> questions? Okay. They have nothing to do with this, so they're like funny, goofy ones. This is a complete new episode. Yeah, yeah. transition. Transition. <laughs> I was like a right turn. We, we really need to work on transitions for the upcoming episode. <laughs> Ideally, you would read these, but Jordan can't read, so. Yeah, I don't read, so. Well, you just read, you read those to me. Do you want to know how many times I read Oh, you prepped? Yeah. She's dysle dyslexic? Yes. The one yet. And I also like didn't even read the questions fully. Like I made them up in my head at the same time. Those weren't the questions. Like I can't read. No. <laughs> okay, this is from Haley. Where's Haley? We're supposed to be. Oh, oh, oh Haley. Hi, Haley. <laughs> Hi. We got our hand slapped because we weren't doing enough um, uh, audience interaction. So this is me and her. We Hello, love Haley. Haley. We love Haley. We've only actually met Haley on Zoom, so it's like we're seeing her in the flesh yeah. for the first time. It's exciting. Um, oh, what era are you guys in? Oh, wow. Um, oh, what are like the options? Like, is that a any I, era? Oh, like, a, okay. Uh, oh, oh I was going to say I'm in my girlfriend era. Okay. Oh, Jordan has a boyfriend. Yeah, I'm, I'm a boyfriend. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I like hate to say it, but... Bro, read the room. The, 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 <laughs> oh, so, I mean, sorry, yeah. I'm just kidding. The rules have reversed. I'm kidding. You want to know what I wanted to say? No. See, I've just been waiting. This is so morbid. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But no, I, was like, I was like, season one, relationship, married, single. Season two, single, relationship. The rules have reversed. You're but having too much so fun. still be successful because the rules have reversed. Because no one wants to listen to two single people or two married people. No one people. does. That's so boring. So we, one of us always has to say That's single. why we did it. Jordan called me. He's like, I have a boyfriend. I was like, I got this. Hold on. <laughs> she's, she's like, okay. <laughs> it's time. Sorry, Graham. She's like, I like somebody. I was like, one moment. I'm like, can I finally have a relationship? It's been two years. Graham, we, we don't even have to have a problem. We'll just. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. I'm, ki I'm kidding. He know he'll know that's a joke. Yes. Um, give me an era. Op what's the options? I don't know the eras. Oh, wait. It's actually, it's. It's not Taylor Swift, it's like what era? Like, are you in, you're in your entrepreneur era? Yes, you're, I'm in my self-discovery era. Yes, you're, you're in, who is Alex Bennett? I guess your last name is Yes, still I'm keeping his. the last name. Who is Alex Bennett? That's your era. That's correct. That's the question. Um, oh, oh, gosh. Well, they didn't say who it was. What's your ick about one another? <laughs> I like Peter. I would say that you got a boyfriend. Um... Uh, what? I was going to say, I like Peter. I would say that it was that you got a boyfriend. That's my ick? My ick about you. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but I like, I was going to say, I like it. Um, I, Do you know what I, I, get a, I get a permanent pass this episode. My brain is fried. An ick is like, uh, it could be like, I, you hate when I go like this. Pick at my nails. I hate when you pick at That's your nails. That's an ick that you have it. about me. She sits me. there and like, does that. Oh, runs early. Yeah. About five minutes. Yeah. One of my. Yeah. And then texts me here, like, I know. <laughs> Fully. She texts me, she's like, I'm here. I'm like, I know, I know you are. I was with your mom waiting for you today. But I knew you were there. Yeah, I was. For, I, I got here 30 minutes early. So I sat in the park. Oh my God. <laughs> By myself. I had the key. I don't know why I keep giving you the key. Me either. Well, because I live 10 minutes away. My ick about you is your <laughs> taste buds. Oh, yeah, I eat like a... I can't stand it. You have no good snacks ever. None. Like, if I... And I don't know why I haven't learned by now if I go to your apartment, which in every situation in life, we always are at your apartment, I don't ever bring snacks. I used to have a snack drawer for you. Yes, you guys did. It was Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Sour Patch Kids, M&M's. 
that was I miss those days. Yeah. Can we? Okay, can I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. I'll get, I'll get it back. Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, what's one word to describe your next phase in your life? I mean, there's a low hanging fruit here, but I'm not going to take it. Uh, well, wait. Am I missing it? What? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I looked. Do you guys know the low hanging fruit? No. Yeah. Right. What? It was, right. What is it? No. No, I'm dead serious. I can't tell you if you don't know. Wait, You're, what? What's your one word to describe your next phase? Oh, like you're single? Is that your low-hanging fruit? It could be. Oh, okay. Um, wait, sorry, what's the question again? <laughs> one, <Sorry>. word, <laughs> one word to describe the next phase in your life. Um, one word, entrepreneur. Taken. Girlfriend. Yeah. My relationship doesn't define me, Alex. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would say... Loved. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm. One word's hard. It's so hard. I think we could do better. Uh, I was just going to say, like, um, ooh, what? Paris. No. Um, no. I'm sick of this whole Paris thing. I'm not allowing you to go to Paris alone. <laughs> I know, but I have to think of another word. Ambitious, alive. Just. Just. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay, when. Where, wait, where we can shop the thing. Oh, uh, where can you find our outfits? Um, at Shop Rodeo. Um, no, it, we're going to link them on Shop Rodeo. Yeah, but like give your favorite, oh, like favorite play. I mean, that is just rude. Who do you? Yeah. Okay, where we can shop the things you love. Oh, because we love your style. You can shop them on at Shop Rodeo. It's the link in our bio. Yes. But do you want to like maybe give like two favorite stores you like to shop at? Yes, yes. I am an Alice and Olivia fiend. What were you wearing yesterday? Well, not Alice and Olivia. Cynthia Rally. Okay. Um, this dress is from H and M. Yes. yes. <laughs> Where's your favorite place to shop? Um, I would say like I I love Zara, Ritzia. I was gonna say Ritzia for you. Uh, yeah, those are probably my biggest uh, biggest. Revolve. Revolve. Big Revolve gal. How was it working for stool? What's Fabulous that? Barstool. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I was like, come on, man. It was great. Yeah. We loved it. Without, without Barstool, we never would have found each other. The podcast never would have started. It was like the best launching pad we could have ever asked for. And we learned so much. Yeah. Um, what did you major in in college? The same thing. Communications. Did you minor? Uh, yeah, uh, management, communications, and wellness. Okay. What I was, was your minor? Native American studies. I know. <laughs> From Oklahoma. <laughs> well, uh, where, is, you know, people are like, you should, why do you guys ever like uh, pre record episodes? I'm like, because this happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I've heard the same thing over and over again. I know. Well, I, you know. Okay, where'd you go to college? NDSU. Where is that? North Dakota. Thank you. State University, yes. which. When it's hunting season, open season, the football field, arena, stadium, the football stadium is at half capacity because everyone's hunting. That is correct. I went to the University of Oklahoma. You want to let me answer that? Oh, you, I know. She's been. Oh, you. I got oh, a couple hours left on the table there. Um, what? That's it. That's all of them. Oh. Oh, shoot. We're so bad at the part no, where this that's, ends. but that's the ending of our, our oh, four-day live show. We have a question from the audience. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. The tick, all of the profit is going to. I pick, I picked it. I linked it. Um, somebody sent me five charities, and I picked the one that it's going. That was Jordan makes our to do list. That's it. Remind me to do this to to submit the donation. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. We really should have prepped this part. Of yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to pull it up? I'm on it. I, there was one for the kids. There was one. I'll pull it up. It's mine's not. It's not saying. I went through like painstaking detail of it. Well, I want the more details on it. You can just say the name. I mean, it's benefiting Israel, obviously. But we had we had the specific charity. I was excited about Heart. this. Hard, but I know, but it was, there was more, I linked it in my story. There's more info on exactly oh, where mean, it's going. You want the description. Yes, because yeah, I yeah, read yeah. five and I can't remember exactly what this one was. I don't want to butcher it. Yeah. But it's linked on the story. We'll link it on Mean Girl too. It is linked. I linked it. Good job. Add a girl. 
<laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> and we we love you guys. Yeah. And I'll, we'll never forget this crowd and here. And that was season two. We're done. That's it. <laughs> just there it is. <laughs> can Gotta you get better at that? Can you imagine? And we were like, this is all four episodes for season two. We're, we're, that's it. Season We've got to be so month. much better at the, the exit. <laughs> well, Alex. Tell them you love them. I do love you guys so much. We love so you guys. Much. Thank you for coming. Happy Thursday. Yes. Happy yeah. Thursday. Yeah.